I got some new running shoes. So yesterday I went shopping for some new running shoes, much needed. And these are the shoes that I came home with. And I'm gonna give you guys the first impressions uh, for these two shoes. So we're dealing with the uh, Asics Nova Blast, that's that one, and the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 8. So I'll do reviews on these later and show you guys how they look outside and, and all that good stuff. But of course, first I gotta try them. <laughs> and I haven't, and I'm actually heading out for a run right now after this video, and I'm gonna do it in this uh, pair. So I'll add in a little bit of a commentary after my first run. I've been running in minimal drop shoes for a while now. Uh, started out with, you know, Vibram Five Fingers and Ultra shoes, really dedicated to the low drop idea. And I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Later years, I've run with Hoka shoes mostly, which typically have a drop for from around like three, four millimeters up to five or six. High drop shoes are more like 10, 12, even 14 millimeters of drop. And of course, if you don't know, drop is essentially then the difference between the stack height in the back and the stack height in the front. So essentially a zero drop shoe will be completely flat. Your foot will be flat. The more drop you have, the more your heel will be elevated relative to your toes. And the proposed benefit of this, of course, is to alleviate some of the stress on your Achilles tendon, uh, since it doesn't have to go as far down with each step, um, as well as other structures in the lower leg. So they typically say that if you have a lot of lower leg injuries, you should probably go with a higher drop. And if you have a lot of knee and hip injuries, you should probably go for a lower drop. And this is not really substantiated well in the science, but running lore says that it's so. And um, I thought, well, maybe I should experiment a little bit, right? So I've been having issues with my Achilles tendon lately. I have, all my running injuries are always lower leg issues. So I thought maybe I'm, because I do have very limited ankle mobility and my Achilles tendon is very tight. Maybe I should try some higher drop shoes, right? And it's worth trying. Of course, I don't want to go completely over to that side because that would probably make my Achilles tendon even shorter. So the idea is to have some days with higher drop shoes, some days with lower drop shoes, maybe even some days with zero drop shoes to give a good balance uh, of it all. But I've never tried high drop shoes. And I thought it's about time I do. So these are both 10 millimeters in drop which is the highest drop I've ever tried. Um, the A6 Nova Blast, really, really, I <sighs> love the smell of new shoes. Really, really fresh. I like the look. Uh, pretty lightweight. It's, it came in at around 300 grams when I weighed it myself. Um, I put it on yesterday in the shop and it was the most comfortable shoe I've ever put on, I think. <laughs> it was just, immediately comfortable. So let's see how it goes on my run today. Um, it's lightweight, it's very well cushioned, it's a very soft shoe, which is what I would like. I would like to have one of these soft shoes in my rotation. Uh, fair, it's not very stiff, but it's not super flexible either. Um, just generally a high mileage shoe, I think. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, it'll be interesting to keep this in my rotation. I want to I want to change out my running shoes more often I, I again, there's no hard scientific evidence for for the need to change running shoes so often but typically traditionally runners do You know say that you need to change your running shoes often or else you'll get injuries and I don't really want to do that Experiment, you know to see if I can really push the envelope on how long I can run in a running shoe I think it's better for me to just change it more often, maybe every 800 uh, kilometer, maybe every 1,000 kilometers. I've run in some shoes, like my Hoka Bondi, I've run for almost 2,000 kilometers in them. I think that's probably a little bit too much. So those are the Asics. And then there's the Adidas shoe, which is a little uh, more of a racing shoe, maybe. It's pretty light, 270 grams, I weighed that. 
and it's a little bit stiffer in terms of in terms of the, the sole the, the the cushioning doesn't seem to be as soft uh, but that's good so you know i have this shoe for maybe longer runs and easy runs recovery runs and this shoe maybe for like a tempo runs and a little faster running it's pretty cool i like the color uh, i've never tried adidas i've never tried asics either so it's 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 just an interesting experiment. This shoe was wide enough for my very wide feet. Immediately fit me perfectly. When I put this on, it felt a little bit uh, narrower around, around the midfoot, which could be a problem for me. We'll see eventually. I, I have very wide feet and I sometimes get pain in my uh, little toe uh, joint if I, um, if I have a too narrow of a shoe. Uh, but I'll just have to experiment. That's the only way to find out. I'm excited about both shoes. They're both 10 millimeter drop. They're both pretty light. One is a little bit firmer and probably faster, kind of. Other one is a little bit softer and a little bit more of a training mileage shoe. Without further ado, I'm gonna head out. And as I said, I'll make a review later where I, where I actually show you some cool footage outside. Today I just want to zone out, not do any filming, and focus on how the shoe feels. Alright, so it's a few days later, I've tried the shoes. There are pros and cons to both shoes, but quickly, bullet point style, Asics, extremely comfortable, very bouncy and springy. The foam really gives a lot of energy return, you feel like you're just being propelled forward. That's really awesome. Downside. It's a little unstable laterally. I felt like maybe I was pronating a little bit more. I have a weird ankle pain that I'm thinking maybe is due to one or both of these shoes. The Adidas, definitely more firm. Didn't feel like a high drop shoe. It almost felt like a minimal drop shoe, in, to be honest. Um, I liked the stability of it, but um, I did get that weird pain after running in this shoe and I don't know if it's because I ran in this in the morning and this in the afternoon and it's because of both of them or one of them is like sort of a weird ankle pain. I'm thinking maybe I'm pronating, you know, more than usual because of the high drop or because of the soft sole in the A6 shoes causing me some um, ankle issues, I don't know. but. I hope that it's just adjusting to a new shoe. They both feel kind of unfamiliar uh, to what I'm used to. Uh, I must say I'm a big fan of the A6 more so than the Adidas though, like initially. It just feels, just that foam feels amazing. But as I said, it was a little unstable, a little weird. That's all. Just wanted to share those thoughts with you guys. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want to stay tuned to the reviews coming up. Eventually, um, I do have other shoe reviews. I'll put a link to it somewhere here so you can watch it. And of course, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what shoes you're running in at the moment. And if you have any experience with either of these shoes, let me know if you feel the same that I do or if you like them or dislike them, etc. Thanks for watching.